Hey everybody, first community meeting of 2024, yay. It's uh, Tuesday, January 9th, and this is the Chaos Community Call. Uh, quick reminder, because we do have some new faces on the call today. Uh, we are, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct, so keep that in mind as you interact with us today. Um, what else? This is the meeting where we basically just kind of talk about everything that's pertinent to the whole community. So um, we're not going to get super into the detailed metric development or anything like that. This is a very high level kind of meeting just for us to get together and chat about what's going on. So glad to see the new faces here. We had a really great newcomer hangout um, earlier today. Uh, so I'm really glad that some of you came. That was awesome. I appreciate you coming, um, even though we weren't sure what time it was, but we figured it out. So I'm glad you made it. <laughs> Still trying to get on the daylight savings. I still, yeah. By the time, and I said this in the meeting earlier, by the time I figure it out, it'll be daylight savings time again, and I'll have to start all over again. So, yeah. Um, the minutes are in the chat, but if um, you need them again, if you're if you just joined, we can easily drop those in there. Not a big deal. Uh, feel free to add your name here to the list of attendees, and then tell us how you like to celebrate the new year. Seems like most people are very chill. I used to not be chill. I used to be one of those like, yes, let's do it, but not anymore. I'm very chill. I stay up till about 12.05, I think. Yeah, so. But I do make it. I, I will make it. I haven't fallen asleep before, so I'm, I'm considering that a win, pretty much. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's jump into it. I wanted to just say welcome back to everybody. Um, reminder that we do have uh meetings now <laughs> again uh, i have also noticed <clears throat> that some of the meetings weren't quite right so if you see something wrong just let me know i will fix it my apparently my brain last year at the end of the year was just shut down i don't know i don't know what it was um yeah so hopefully the calendar is right, <laughs> right um but if you do see something weird just let me know uh, and again, here it is. And also, again, reminder, if you have copied things to your personal calendar, we have moved a few things around. So I will say that uh, the me uh, metrics model mo meeting <laughs> metrics model meeting has moved. Say that fast. I bet you cannot do it. And a few others. I think the science one was there was some question about that, too. So um, just double check this page. This is the one source of truth right here. So just double check this page if you're not sure when meetings are happening. And I will also turn the uh, the if this then that bot thing on for our uh, Slack. So actually, I wanna make sure I don't forget to do that. So I will give myself an action item to turn the IFTTT bot back on in Slack. Awesome. Uh, the next thing is, I just wanted to let everybody know, we, um, I archived the minutes as we do uh, periodically because this document gets to be like literally 178 pages since we have these meetings every week and these uh, they tend to be long uh, meeting minutes so if you are curious and you would like to see what was going on uh, I did keep December's just so we would have that with us but um, everything else is down below. So if you're wondering, that's where it is, and we do this with every meeting too, so if you're a meeting. Uh, what is it? What are we calling it? Working group lead. I forget what we're calling it, but um, that is something that you might consider doing would be great for people because it's hard to load these documents when they get so full. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, questions about that? Anything? OK, cool. Um, this is a thing uh, we were talking about yesterday, Matt and I were talking about with regard to, it came up from the DEI project badging, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, but we were wondering if it would be a good idea <clears throat> to put um, all of our DEI efforts into one place, uh, just in case people wanted to see them all in one place. So I started this doc, and I wanted to just let people know that this was in the works and make sure everybody knew this was open. I just started this yesterday. This is as far as I got. So if there are things that you think are important that we mention and that we let 
others know about, especially newcomers to the community or people who might be considering joining the community, um, please feel free to drop them in here. Um, you, if you don't know what to say about it, totally fine. Just drop it in as a comment that it's an idea that we that you think is important that we should include and let people know about. Then again, DEI stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. So it's things that we do to try to make this community a more welcoming place uh, so that everyone feels like they belong here. Anything, any of our efforts, um, yes, perfect, uh, is um, we would maybe want to put in here, but I don't know what a good balance is. Also, I don't want to overwhelm this document. Um, and a lot of this, not a lot, some of our information is in our DEI.md file, which is right here, which is also something that- Why are you saying this? Why are you saying this? Oh, keep it short. Yes, don't allow you to talk. Don't allow you to talk, sir. Since that you are sitting where you are, I noticed that in the one guy right here. Since that is- Because we're getting some background noise. There we go. Um, so if you haven't seen this doc too, this is uh, in conjunction with our project badging, which again, we'll talk about, but we- we do mention four of our metrics here. So here is where we talk about how chaos um, thinks about project access, communication, transparency, newcomer experience, and inclusive leadership. So this is another document I guess we should make sure everybody has seen. And I will put this in here. So, so again, if you have thoughts on this, you can also just hit me up on Slack. So just say, hey, put this in here, or don't include this, or whatever, whatever, whatever you want to put. Um, this is a community-built document. I just started it, so yeah. The only the only question I have, Ooh. Elizabeth, is if so. There's the our DEI policies that we enact as a project, and then there are also programs and metrics that we have for other projects. Is this intended to be a one-stop shop for both of those things? No. No. Okay. This is this just a, just within chaos. Okay. So like things that chaos is doing to try to make things more accessible, inclusive, welcoming, etc. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. And I should also say if there are things that you have seen maybe in other open source communities that were awesome and you think we should be doing it here at chaos, that's also completely valid. So if it's something that should be in this document, but it's not because we're not doing it, we should do it. So again, let me know. Let me know what we can do. I'll just put this in here, open to everyone to collaborate on. And we are thinking about putting this on the about part. Is that right, Matt? Or did we say community? I don't totally remember where it would land. I don't either. <laughs> so if you have thoughts on where we should put it, that's we would love that too. <laughs> Much of this came up because if we do project badging and we get a badge, then where do we put it? We have to have that info to give ourselves a badge. For what it's worth, my first inclination is to put it under the about, but I don't feel strongly about it. Yeah, okay. Well, we can just put it somewhere and then if we decide we don't like it there, we can, we can move it. It's okay. <laughs> it's not permanent. It's all right. It's how the internet works. You can just change it. It's great. And also on this DEI file, DEI.md file, which is somewhere right here. Uh, if you have comments on this or suggestions, something that we maybe overlooked that we are doing and we forgot to put in here, that would be great. So just let us know. And this again is on GitHub. So PRs, comments, welcome. Other questions about this? I see I'm, somebody... I'm going to work the DEI.md. Yeah, the, we're, we're a little off on the template. I think because we made this prior to the template. Let me see. And so I can, I'll do that. 
I was okay. just working on it right now. Just for example, like newcomer experience, project access, like the numbering is off on those anyway. Oh. You're supposed to be level three headers according to the template. Yeah. And... I'll, issue, I'll just issue a PR. I don't okay. I won't change any of the comments, but. Yeah. Okay. That looks good. Formatting yeah. turned out weird. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Matt. I'll put you down. Awesome. What else about this? These actually two items that go together kind of. Any other questions, comments? Okie dokie. We'll move on. Uh, Matt and I were looking at the website yesterday and we realized that this, we want to just bring it here um, just for, you know, other input. So we have under our knowledge base here, this section that says governance. And in governance, we have these docs. But we notice that these docs are also in our about. And they look a little bit, first off, that's a little weird to have them in two places, we think, maybe, because they're different urls even though they are they both pull from the same github doc like all a lot of our website is pulled from github so we can change something on github and it reflects back on the website which is great um so that piece is okay they just first off they look a little different and they have different urls so for instance here's the charter which is here and it looks like this and then on the community charter we should probably have two things open. Like it just looks a little different and it's now under the KB. So what we were kind of thinking, we wanted to just bring it again to the community for um, for feedback is A, do you think this matters? Like Matt and I kind of thought it did, but if nobody else, if we're the only ones, then I don't, yeah, okay, I see some yeses. I, um, I Elizabeth, I think, it makes sense to have this kind of information under the about and then having it in the knowledge base is a little bit buried. So I don't know what other people think. I'm, I'm curious for Don, Georg, Culier, other Pete Mary Blessing's perspective on that. Yeah, I personally, I, I think it's kind of weird in the knowledge base. Um, and I'm generally not a fan of having things several different places. So I would I would be a fan of putting it under the about section. That would mean that we also need to, I think the one thing that's missing in the about section is the, the new governance document, the one that we wrote and had approved by the governing board most recently um, in the fall or late summer. I think that'll need to be moved to the about page, but I, I think it more, makes more sense to have all this under the about page anyways. Totally agree. Uh, when we, sorry. Okay. I was going to say when we originally when we originally did this, the plan was to not have the project charter in there. Uh, so I'm not sure when those got added. Uh, so th those the plan was to have those documents just in the about page and not in the knowledge base. So the so I would so I would vote to get rid of them. Okay, that makes total sense. Then um, it seems like everybody's kind of in agreement on that. And then to your point, Don, yes, absolutely. We would add that um, governing governance document here, I think as well, because I think that would be the, that's the only thing that's missing, like you said. Um, something else that we saw too was this roles and responsibilities. And I'm pretty sure this is really old because um, <clears throat> the new like partner document that goes with the governance doc that has all the, like the working groups and everything is that also had roles and responsibilities that were updated and accurate. This I think is old because um, it had things on here like this editor, like why well, do that? But Twitter manager, like that's not a thing really. Um, so some of these were old. So we're just gonna get rid of this document totally. Is that cool with everybody? <laughs> or we'll argue. <laughs> This reminds me of the community handbook when way back when we had that created 
But yeah. that made sense. So I'm fine with removing it in favor of the new documents we have. Okay. I Yes, I think you're right. It was just kind of a leftover um, artifact from that. Um, and yeah, this I would, uh, I would say what uh, the same thing that I said earlier, that document was, I think we had talked about deleting that when we initially created this. So it uh, seems like some things maybe never got done or fell through or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is the actual doc that's right. And here are the roles and responsibilities that are actually true. <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, working group chairs, that's the word I was trying to think of. Um, earlier. So archiving the minutes and uh, things like that is what a chair does. And um, oh, also, we were thinking about doing some repository cleanup, Matt and I, so you all might see some things being archived. If something is archived that you were using, <laughs> or you didn't want archived, even though it may not have had any activity, um, just let us know and we cannot archive it, but uh, our, we have a, a lot of repositories in chaos and a lot of them are kind of um, old. So yeah, we'll be doing some cleanup there. And then moving forward, if you're a working group chair, like that's something that you can do as well as you go, you know, keeping up with those repos. Um, and then liaisons too, we still have those. Um, do we need any new liaisons? Are we good? I think we're good, right? We are. Okay. Yeah, Just because I know we've changed some working groups around and things, but I think we're okay. Okay. And then maintainers are also part of the working groups. So um, they're not quite a chair, but they are uh, supposed to be helping. And then these are our staff positions. Okay. So yeah, so if anybody wants to just look at this and um, I don't know if you're not familiar with this document, it will be moving then again to the about page, but this is accurate and good and I will drop it here just because I know we have some new folks too that uh, this might be helpful for them as well. Okay, so any um, other Sean, oh. do you have a comment? Or did you I have a no, I raised my hand earlier for something okay. and then I just piped in. Sorry about just that. Just left I... it up just all, all day. So oh, yeah, yesterday, when, when Elizabeth and I were chatting to, I thought Elizabeth made a really good point. Um, I'm reading about white markers or whiteboard markers, but um, Elizabeth made a really good point is that obviously we have the web page and we really focus on the content that's on there. So she and I are going to be really kind of going through that web page. It looks pretty good. Um, so it's kind of the the direction from the GitHub repos to the web page, but Elizabeth's point was we also need to think about like what just still resides in the GitHub repos that isn't going to the web page or really isn't going anywhere because you you can leave a lot of that GitHub material behind while still kind of cleaning up the website. And do the, we have an inventory somewhere of the but, objects coming from GitHub? I suppose is the follow up question. Well, we we will once we kind of go through the web page, and so we we have to do it in both directions. Was her point? <laughs> like we can't just look at what's looking good on the web page, and then leave the GitHub repos just full of old weird things. We need to do the cleanup in the GitHub repositories as well. We just have to go both both directions. So we're we're just I think she and I had just kind of talked, and we'll kind of you know start doing that, and others can join as well. So. I just made a note that a lot of the content that comes in from GitHub is through an LF custom plugin. So if you need help sorting that out, Kevin and I have done that before. Yeah, thank you. But uh, Matt's hand is up too. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Sorry to leave join, I have a class. So, so I just looked at it uh, back in time when I was revamping everything and connecting, we decided that we'll keep uh everything in alignment whatever is on the github is supposed to be on the web page and that's why i cleaned many things and then there was a discussion we don't want to leave things out maybe then i think it's a time to decide a policy we have a we should have a policy sometimes what happens like i've been uh, with chaos and i've seen these trains sometimes we do things sometimes we remove them we bring them back 
and then again we remove them. It's better to have a uh, dedicated policy for the website that if a page is on the GitHub, it should be on the website or some something along those lines. Because over the course, I have seen things keep on going away and coming back and going away and coming back. So <laughs> these are just my two cents. But whatever we stick with, we just stick with one particular thing and we can carry on that. So I have a comment on that. Um, you know, I think this, the spot that we're in now to be able to, whether it's set policy or kind of take a look at um, the things that are on GitHub and things around on the web page are only possible because of the heavy lift we did last year around the Git, the, the GitHub, uh, around the web page. Like there, we couldn't have possibly seen everything and caught everything in that major revamp. And so it just kind of feels like this is just a continuation of that process. Um, kind of just dealing with the parts that maybe slipped through or the parts that maybe we weren't expecting to be like they are. So point well taken, Vinod. I just think we're kind of in this phase two around the web page and the content on GitHub. Okay. Yeah, Kevin, go ahead. Uh yeah, so I would uh I would kind of clarify a little bit what Vinod said and uh, adjust it. So not everything that's on GitHub needs to be on the website. We just need to denote which folders are going to the website. Uh, so the for the example, the, uh, the charter, the charter should be in that community repo, but the charter should not be in the, the community knowledge base, right? The, it should be outside of that. It should be in a different folder. It goes to a different place. So the this the the community knowledge base is there to to help people know how to contribute. So all of the documents in there should be those. Uh, the documents that like the the charter, those things go to the 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 uh, the about page, and they they can be in a different folder. So and kind of the same thing with the the metrics and models, right? If we as long as we know which folders are going where, we're fine. But not everything on GitHub needs to go to the website, and not everything in that community community GitHub repo needs to go to the website. Like a, a lot of that can just be documentation that exists on GitHub. Yeah. And I would think a possible or good proposed solution is, uh, which I I think I proposed back in time also is. We keep a track of, uh, I created that sheet, we can incorporate, as we are keeping an uh, Excel sheet of uh, uh, metrics, we can have an Excel sheet of all the website pages, which are linked to a particular GitHub that I created at a separate document. I can bring it back to the tracking sheet we have for the, and we have a separate tape uh, for the website and we can keep track. It'll be very easy. Okay, if you want to remove, we remove from that, same way we are tracking uh, metrics, we remove the metrics or we uh, update the metric and same tracking will be for the website. It'll be very easy and helpful, those who are maintaining the sites and contributing that. Uh, Ron, are you suggesting um, a content management by menu management in a way? Just wanna make sure I follow. Uh, what I'm suggesting is, for example, if we have uh, three uh, groups in the website, say uh, knowledge base, all the contents and, a relevant links pointing to the GitHub, be it on a governance repo, be it on a metric repo, be it on any repo. We created those links in an Excel format as maybe in a tree structure, we can map it so that every page on the website maps to a particular GitHub page if we have that page. Okay. So that if anything that, that needs to be changed will be changed in the page and also updated on the in this tracking mechanism. So it'll that be makes easier sense. for maintaining the website. Thanks. I do. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, I 100% agree that that would be extremely helpful, um, Vinod. So yes, please. <laughs> I think you said that that's, the, that's what you had started already, right? Yes, I, I did it in a separate document. I can bring it uh, to the one document uh, where we are tracking the metrics and have a separate tab and for the website and that can be updated and maintained as we are maintaining the metrics in that uh, Excel sheet. That would be amazing. 
and, and just for context, for those who have no idea what we're talking about at all, um, when we look at our website, we have, so we have this content that happens on GitHub and we have a plugin that pulls from GitHub, but not everything comes from the same place. So like this comes from the governance repo, our event stuff comes from the website repo, um, the community knowledge base comes from the community repo. So we're kind of, um, we, have, we have the content distributed throughout GitHub, but it's hard to remember where things come from unless you don't know. <laughs> and so like those of us who work on the website a lot kind of know where stuff is, but um, A, that's not great. Um, everybody should know where everything is. And B, there, that's where we would be able to maybe see a better picture of like what's falling through the cracks, what's not being included that should be or vice versa. So that's just a little context. And I think if we're, more, if we're more clear about that too, I think it'll make it easier for people to contribute. Um, because I, if I want to make a change to a website page, even just to correct a typo or something, it, it takes a while to figure out whether or not I can make that change myself and get up or whether I have to talk to somebody else to make it more aggressive. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. And we've also talked about, so at, on the metrics, we have at the bottom of each metrics page, we have the link to, um, where the metric lives on GitHub. So if you want to make a change. Uh, to edit this metric, please submit a change request here. We have been talking about, I think I was talking about this somebody, maybe I have this in my brain, I don't know, doing the same thing for all the documents, like it, everything we can that would, you know, would be appropriate to put that all that knowledge based stuff everywhere, because this is really the helpful thing for people if they want to make an update or a change. So that's another little project. Yeah, adding that URL to all the docs. I just thought, Elizabeth, we need to do this for the slash badging org as well. Because yeah. remember yesterday, we, we were trying to find <laughs> the one document, find like one word <laughs> on a page to change, and we could not find it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes search on GitHub isn't great. So yeah. So I, I would. Uh... To, to what we were talking about earlier uh, in updating the community repo, the, the website repo probably needs to be updated as well. And there is a lot of content on that web, on the, uh, in the GitHub repo that can be deleted and it's no longer applicable. So we, and then to Don's point, we don't, uh, we don't currently have uh, any uh, accurate documentation on how to contribute to the website. Uh, and that would be a it would be a good place to add some sort of mapping, uh, which Fanad was talking about. So, so the that that work on the website might be something that we uh, we try to do this year. So I have the list. I can provide the list when I was revamping back in August. So since August, I have not looked at back what changes have been made. So we can start with that list and add on to that particular thing. Now I was trying to find out where I've saved that list. I can share a link in a while and then from there we can keep on adding or uh, updating that site. That would be amazing, Vinod. I wouldn't, yeah, I can figure out what, what has changed since then. So don't worry about that. But just having that base would be amazing to start with as okay. opposed to starting from scratch. Yeah, I'll, I'll share during the meeting, I'll share it in the uh, link for that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I'm I'm fairly certain you have shared that with us well, with some of us um, in the past. So it might be in my history somewhere as well, my browser history from months ago. So yeah. Um, okay, and Georg says, yes. Okay, they can be deleted. Okay, sounds good. All right, thanks everybody. Awesome conversation. Appreciate you all very, very much. I'm gonna move forward because we, I think Chaos Comm Planning Committee does wanna maybe touch base at the end, okay. And again, for those who are new, we kind of, since we're planning Chaos Con coming up, we, we chop this meeting a little short. So uh, we will end this meeting a little bit shorter than usual, just to give us time for the Chaos Con planning at the end. And you don't have to stick around for all that. I did wanna let everybody know that we are gonna go ahead and shut down discourse. Like it just didn't take off and that's fine. Um, if you are new and you have gone to this uh, quick start, um don't do this 
<laughs> essentially don't do that just ignore that i uh, will get this changed and we're just going to shut it down because it's kind of la languishing out here and it's confusing for people and it's not great so we'll keep with slack it's a little bit better now that we have the paid slack messages do stick around and that was kind of our impetus for going to discourse is like it was a place to have long-term conversations that could be easily found slack is, seems to just be the thing that we use so that's also totally fine Sometimes you try stuff and it works and sometimes it doesn't and that's cool. So yeah, if you are in discourse, um, yeah, don't be anymore. The next we, is, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was, uh, I meant to raise my hand, but I uh, talked before I hit the button. Uh, do we want to talk about bringing the mailing list back if discourse is going away or are we just a uh, no mailing list? Are we just happy with no mailing list? I, I'm not a fan of the mailing list, to be honest, but I know people are, so I don't know. To be fair, the mailing list had language and nobody was posting to those either. Yeah, I, I concur. I, I think Slack seems to be proving useful to the community and it's nice having one place to look for chaos communications for the most part. Just as a note on the mailing list, I think before it ended, I was just spending every day deleting spam off of it. That was like a daily task of mine. <laughs> yeah, there was you, a lot. Do you miss it? Because we could restore the mailing list. No, <laughs> I was very happy when that was gone. Like something you'd really love to do every day, Matt. I don't want to. I don't want to deprive you of that joy. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, I think we have, we have all the meeting minutes. We have the meetings recorded and then posted on YouTube. I feel like we have, we have the record of where I think we make a lot of the decisions, which is really the benefit of a mailing list. Yeah. Nicole I, mentions about having the, the, the one place and, the, and like, that's the thing that communities struggle with is like having the one source is great, but if it doesn't work for everybody, then that who it doesn't work for kind of gets left out. So having a little bit more of a choice is also good, but then you're right, it kind of distributes the information and it's hard to know where to go to find what. So I, I do agree, Nicole, that having one place is great and, and Slack is immediate, so it's kind of nice. Are we using a version, uh, like a paid version of Slack where everything is archived? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so at least there's that. And I think when we started the discourse conversation, I don't know that we were on the paid version. Um, so, yeah. I don't think we were. I think it was. I think it was free at that time. Got you. All right. So we'll just move everything. Slack is it. Slack is the place to be. I think too. We were also wanting to do like badges and things like that for people who have been contributing and didn't really have a way to highlight and recognize those people but i know slack doesn't really have anything so i don't know we'll think about that some more okay we're going to move on because we're kind of running out of time here a uh, quick update for those who have not heard we now have the full schedule complete for chaos con yay which is happening in brussels on february 1st we have our keynote julia Ferroli. Is that how you pronounce her last name, Ferroli? Fer Ferroli, I think it is. Um, so we're very excited. We have all our speakers ready to go. We have sponsors. So we are going to have a social event paid for, which is amazing, right? That's right, right. I shouldn't say. <laughs> okay, I see nodding. I should have just made sure before I announced that. Um, so yeah, if you are able to come to Brussels, um, we would love to have you at ChaosCon. It's a couple days before FOSTEM. So I'm not sure about this part, which I'm thinking we will talk about after this meeting, um, just to see. We're trying to get live streaming, um, but I don't know if we are going to be able to do that. So that's still TBD to be determined. Um, quickly want to give a DEI project badging update. We are so close so close to announcing this um, openly. We've been talking about it a lot. Uh, this is a project that we have been working on forever, for about a year and a half now. 
And what it will do is allow open source projects to display a badge on their site that says that they have done this DEI.MD file and, and let their community know publicly how they attend to these four metrics and more in some cases. So um, I don't know what else we want to say about that, Matt, Sean. I don't know what else we want to say yet, but. No, I think you got it. Okay. Yeah. Just stay tuned, <laughs> I guess is what we're saying. Stay tuned this week um, because there will be some great news coming out of, a, of chaos. So, yay. And then anything else that we are missing that we need to talk about? I just want to make sure we like, left some space for that. Um, just to add to the previous conversation, Elizabeth, I looked at the document. Unfortunately, I moved out of Omaha and university has closed my account and we lost access to that document. It's totally fine, Renan. It happens. It is not a big deal. I'm trying to, like, it's asking me to request an access, but it's just not there. Quite Google, awesome. uh, university switched from Google to uh, Microsoft, so everything from there is gone. That's okay. I appreciate you looking. But no, that's not a big deal. We can just start from scratch. It's not a big deal. I appreciate you though. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. I think we are about done. So if you are on the ChaosCon planning committee and you wanna stick around and help us figure some stuff out at the, here at the end, be great. Um, everybody else, you can, you can go. Enjoy the rest of your day. We're happy to have seen you in the chaos meeting. And I will end the recording.